welcome back to Cruising Calypso. For those of you who have been following along, we purchased this Tahatsu 8 horsepower motor two seasons ago, actually, when we upgraded our dinghy from the original 9.2, 9 foot high pressure floor dinghy with the Mercury 3.5 to our now almost 11 foot aluminum rib boat. And we had it in the water last year, last season, it worked great. You can see it's a little scuffed. Um, but one of the things I had wanted to do all along was to turn the 8 horsepower into a 9.8. Now, for those who are familiar with the Tahatsu motor, this is the same engine block as the Tahatsu 9.8. Same engine, the only difference is the carburetor. Um, now, not to be confused with the Tahatsu 9.9. .9. The 9.9 .9 is an EFI engine. It's a completely different engine, although it may share the same block. It has EFI completely different. So the 9.8 is this this block with a different carburetor. So my goal was to upgrade it, which is about a 25% horsepower increase from 8 to 9.8. The goal was to have the dinghy that we have that it's about a 10 8, 10 foot 8 aluminum dinghy to be able to for this engine to plane that boat with three people on board. Right now it planes very it's very quick with two, but with three people it won't quite get on plane. So the idea was for this engine to um, plane the boat with three people on board. So that's what I did. I went out and I found a, a brand new original OEM carburetor from Tatsu. Now, I've been meaning to post this video for a while and I actually did this work over the winter. So this is actually the eight horse car power carburetor and there's no way you would have been able to tell this carburetor from the 9.8. It's really just the jets inside. It is the exact same carburetor. It's just the jets inside are bigger. And so that's what allows it to generate 9.8 horsepower. So let me show you how, what I did. To be honest, I was a little tentative about doing this because those of you who have followed the channel and know me is while I'm willing to do any work that requires very low skill, I'm not really a wrench turner and don't have a lot of skill when it comes to working on engines. So, but it turns out this is a surprisingly easy swap. It is literally two or three bolts and, it, and the engine and the carburetor comes off. So what you have first is you have a choke linkage you have a throttle linkage. Both of these, you can see there's a set screw here. And this, this just goes on with a clip. Both of these come off. And then it is attached, and it, you probably won't be able to see very well unless I turn on my light. Um, see if I can do that. But there are screws, two screws back here. So you need a, a you can see them back there. Um, the, you need a socket wrench with an extension on it. And then I initially, I took this off, but that's unnecessary. That can, that does, that's not in the way. This is the air filter. So that you loosen that up. Once you take off those two screws, this just separates right here, right here. You can see on the, on the eight, cause you can, let's just position it in the same way. You can see this one is positioned exactly how that one would be. There we go. It's, uh, working backwards here. And so it has a gasket, which you have to maintain. And so you know, it, it comes off. You you literally place this one back on, or the, or the nine, larger one on. And interestingly enough, I did discover that when you put it back on, so this valve right here, this butterfly valve, is the choke. And let's see if I can do this one-handed. You can see how that operates. That is the choke. Initially when I put it on, I somehow got it a little bit twisted. And so when I got it all back together, the choke wouldn't move. So I had to take it all back apart. And all it was is I had just positioned it slightly off and that valve was, that butterfly valve was um, obstructed. So, um, yeah, so I put it back on, you know, and, and to be clear, this engine had very low, has, this is a very low time hours. I recall I bought this from a gentleman who bought it new 
used it for a season and then bought a new big boat, which came with a bigger dinghy and he didn't need it. So he was, he sold this at, I got a pretty good discount on it. Um, so what, you know, you put it, put it back on again. There's really not a, my, cause my concern was when I was doing this, that there would be a lot of adjustments that I wouldn't know how to do it, but it really, you just leave it alone. This, you know, this fits back on. Again, this is the choke. So while it slides back in, you tighten the set screw, put this back in on the clip, you know, and <laughs> lo and behold, it started right up and ran well. So I'll take some photos today. Today we are actually, we have not put the, this motor and the dinghy. It's now the beginning of August. And because of our sort of broken up summer season, we haven't put the dinghy in the water. We're going to do it. We're taking it down now. Um, let's just take a quick look at the dinghy in all its glory. Deflated in the basement, the garage actually. I have to bring it down by U-Haul truck because it won't fit. I don't have a vehicle. So we're going to bring it down by U-Haul truck or a van. Um, and then we're going to launch it. And then in the future, I've been told I can't store it here anymore. So it's going to be stored at the boat yard so it doesn't take up so much space. So that's why we're going to, and we're going to put it on the boat today. But getting back to the motor, air, motor, the, I started up and we'll take some video of that. We'll show you that. We have it running. Fingers crossed because it ran when I, when I tested it. But so two things. One, now I have an eight horsepower carburetor. If any of you are interested in basically a very low hour, fully functional eight horsepower Tahatsu carburetor. And by the way, this engine is the same engine as the Mercury nine, um, eight horsepower, um, as the, I think Yamaha. I can't be certain, but Tatsu, there's several, you know, rebranded versions of this motor, but, it, um, I'll make a good deal for anyone who wants this in terms of cost of the new one. A brand new carburetor with a new gasket that I bought OEM. So it's, a, you know, and I recommend getting out. Know, there are off brand carburetors. Personally, I don't think I'd recommend that just because, you know, uh, you know, of the tolerances and my low skill, I would stick with, you know, an OEM carburetor to make this change. But, um, this carburetor was about just under $300, about $275. I bought it online and you can find them at various places, but that's what I paid for it. So if you're anyone that's interested in this one, in this eight, Eight horsepower carburetor, if you need it, I will give you a good deal on it since it's of no use to me now. Um, put it, you know, put, you can reach me in the comments below. So yeah, so that's what we did. Um, hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, you know, a 25% increase in horsepower, a 20% increase in horsepower should be enough to plane the boat with three people. So let's see how she runs. Great. 